Well, welcome back again. In case you uh, don't remember where you are, this is the Kirkham Amuvia Day blog. Uh, this is the vlog page for all our video reviews. Uh, we just got back from seeing Lawrence of Arabia and Vertigo down at the Arclight Theater. Uh, Amanda is, uh, went with me and she's going to accompany me in this discussion uh, for the next few minutes. I'll tell you what, we're going to do short little uh, video clips. We won't go nearly as long as we did with Jaws. We're going to keep it relatively short. I forgot to turn on the timer, so let me do that so I can make sure that we don't go too long. There we go. We'll keep our eyes on the time so that we don't hold you too long. We're going to start off with Lawrence of Arabia, and I'll tell you what, it's uh, a little funny. Uh, I sat down in the theater, and I pulled out my phone and put in on my Facebook app I was going to do the check-in and I did that and there was a post from my friend Eric on the East Coast he had just posted his review of Lawrence of Arabia I'm sitting in the movie theater reading the review that he just posted of Lawrence of Arabia when it's 15 minutes from my getting to see it on the big screen so Eric I'm gonna put up a link to your video uh, to your uh, review uh, so that other people can find it and maybe get a little bit more feedback than we're gonna give it right now so how was it seeing it again on the big screen well it was pretty awesome um, the, actually the first time that I saw it was at SC on the big screen a little bit smaller than the one today, but uh, just as beautifully shot and wonderfully acted, and the music, oh my gosh, is amazing. It, it's pretty incredible. Uh, if you read that post I put up about a month ago, you'll remember that I talked about uh, entrance music and overtures and that sort of thing, and they have almost a 10-minute overture where the lights are down, the, scre the, the uh, curtains are still closed on the theater, and uh, they play the music for several minutes and before they open the curtains and the movie starts. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that, and I was actually telling you earlier that they did that at SC, and to have it done again here, and to just also the anticipation of seeing those curtains open up and seeing how big the screen is, and the wide shots of the desert and with that music. Those of you who aren't familiar with the Cinerama Dome, they actually have a curved screen because it was originally designed for showing actual Cinerama uh, movies there. And I, I know they had a film festival there a couple of years ago where they did that. But the big screen is wide, 70 millimeter, and it is curved. So you get uh, a very good effect while you're watching the movie. Um, I first saw Lawrence of Arabia complete uh, back in 1989 when the restoration came out I went and saw it at the Century Th City Theater on the west side there was a there was a big to-do they had an exclusive engagement for a couple of weeks uh, when they did the restoration and that was one of those things that had been done because the movie had been cut up and released uh, you know after it was originally released uh, they chopped it up to release it in in other theaters off of the road show and then when they played it on television it had been chopped up and apparently they had left a lot of things out of the movie over the years so the 88 rest or 89 restoration was uh, you know the first time since it had been in theaters that it was fairly complete uh, very impressive I actually went with my dad to see that uh, and it's nice to be able to be the dad who takes his daughter to see it uh, tonight. So, it, 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 of course, there's nothing about Lawrence of Arabia that you can say that is, I think, problematic about it. It's a fantastic movie. Um, you know, and uh, let me see. Uh, there are so many shots in the movie that are classic. You know, him holding up the match and blowing it out, and they go to that beautiful red sky as the sun is rising on the desert uh, the scene with Omar Sharif appearing on the horizon and just getting slowly bigger and bigger and bigger um, the whole you know the whole trip of the uh, uh, the Arab army to Aquaba to uh, fight that's that's pretty incredible yeah and I know I forget what we were talking about we might have even been talking about it on when it was on satellite a few weeks ago, but those shots of all of those extras, because we talk about the Lord of the Rings and, and movies like that nowadays where a lot of things are, a lot of people are added in with they're, CGI. They're not real people, they're CGI. Yeah. This and is a movie where they hired 
thousands of people and put them in tents out in the desert, and it was pretty yeah, incredible. Yeah, and there's that shot with, uh, I, f I forget which one it is, but the, I think it's the army, and they're in the the ranks, and you just they just keep going and going. Yeah. And you realize those people are all there. Mm -hmm. This, this uh, screening today was introduced by a guy who wrote a book that has been released with the um, newest uh, DVD, DVD Blu-ray Blu Blu yeah. of uh, Lawrence that came out last year and he spoke for four or five minutes introducing the movie. One of the things that he mentioned was that they had to like truck in water for yeah. 150 people uh, or 150 miles a day, I think it was some ridiculous number for the whole group because there wasn't any water there, yeah. and it was like a continuous caravan of water that they had to run back and forth. So it's a pretty incredible uh, story about making of that movie, and that's what his book is about. I'm, I'm, you know, I have an older edition of Lawrence of Arabia. I don't have it on uh, Blu-ray. Uh, I'm now encouraged. Oh, now, now there's a reason to go out and get the Blu-ray. <laughs> now I'm encouraged to go out and As get it. As if there wasn't one before. <laughs> yeah, because we'll have the, uh, the, the book to go with it. Yeah. And um, as Amanda was saying to me afterwards, uh, both of the movies that we saw tonight are, they don't end in a happy way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lawrence, of course, starts off uh, with his funeral, basically. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, we get the whole expanse of his wartime career and that was uh, very impressive and it ends up not working out quite the way he yeah. wanted it to yeah. but uh, the story is just uh, magnificent and David Lean you know when people talk about the great directors David Lean is one of those names that always comes up he's been gone for 20 plus 25 or 30 years you know the last movie that he made was uh, a passage to India, and uh, that was back in the mid to early 80s, I think it was. So um, it's just incredible that we're still looking at and talking about his movies now. Well, I guess I just want to share, I don't know if I've already told you the story, you probably know it, but I think it's interesting that we saw Jaws on Friday and then saw this saw Lawrence of Arabia today because I saw Lawrence of Arabia in the Spielberg class that I took at SC and the reason that we watched it was because uh, Spielberg apparently watches it before he makes any of his films. It's kind of his part of his process where he um, he you know obviously loves the film and admires it so much and maybe it's almost a bit of inspiration I you know he should reach to this kind of level of per perfection and and um, so I just think that it's kind of cool that we saw Jaws on Friday and it was a Spielberg film and then we're seeing Lawrence today and there's this cool connection. Well, I think you can see like, like when you're watching um, Jaws and you see the shooting stars across yeah. the sky when he's out on the ocean. Uh, there, there's that scene early on when Lawrence and his guide are asleep in the desert at night and they're looking up at the stars mm -hmm. and then you can see kind of the moon, it's a, almost a full moon and the stars on one side and that looked very Spielberg-like in that shot. Yeah. And then there's some of those shots of the uh, dust devils in the desert that are pretty incredible and that seems like there were a lot of inserts like that that uh, felt like moments from a Spielberg yeah. film. So yeah. now we know where Spielberg cribbed all of those kinds of things from. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, like I said, we decided that we would keep it relatively short. Uh, wanted to make sure that we uh, counted for the movie that we saw tonight. And uh, let's face it, uh, Lawrence of Arabia is one of the great classic films. And anytime you get a chance to see it, but especially when you get a chance to see it on the big screen in a venue like uh, the Cinerama Dome, uh, you should take advantage of it. If you ever get a chance to see it in a movie theater, make sure to do so. Because although it's pretty spectacular on television, if you've got a big size television, it's it's still pretty spectacular. It's it's not nearly the same same kind no. of thing. No. All right. Well, thank you. We're going to cut this off right now, and we'll be back in just a minute with our discussion of Vertigo.